we're making some progress and hopefully it's not too confusing or overwhelming to understand that we have hardware, software, and operating systems. And that even though it can get a little bit technical talking about motherboards and processors, that there's only a couple of things we have to remember if we're going to purchase a computer to understand what we need. The next thing we need to talk about though is computer memory. And this can really get people confused. So let's see if we can again take it from the top, make it very general, but also make it so you can understand what computer memory is about. Computer memory is just like yours. You have memory, and your memory allows you to remember or recall information. That's exactly the same thing that computer memory does. A couple of different categories of computer memory include read-only memory, or ROM, and this can't be written to or erased. This is like permanent. It's built into your computer. It's important because that's what contains startup information. Before you even get to all of the other components we've been talking about, when you power on a computer, it reads the ROM memory, and that's what gives it the instructions on kind of how to finish up the startup process. The one that we're more concerned about is known as Random Access Memory, or RAM. This is a type of memory that you can read from and write to. But it is temporary. It's only saved until the computer is turned off. And we'll talk about why that's important here in just a few seconds. It's also important to realize that computer storage is not the same as computer memory. Computer storage is something like the hard drive or a CD. Memory is ROM and RAM. So let's talk about this thing called the hard drive. The hard drive is typically internal, and it's permanent or offers long-term storage. So think again back to yourself. You have short-term memory and long-term memory, and stuff that you need to remember for a long time, hopefully you've committed to long-term memory, so that you can recall it not only in the next few moments, but next year, next week, or next month. Remember that the hard drive is not the same as memory. This is actually considered storage. Hard drives are usually measured in gigabytes, and this is something that has changed over time, but now we measure hard drives in gigabytes. The larger the number, the more storage you have. It's kind of like the number of shelves in a library. Now let's think about that analogy for just a second. If I live in a small town, maybe there are 10 bookshelves in the library. Obviously, that can't hold as much as the Library of Congress that has thousands and thousands of shelves. So your hard drive is like a bookcase. You put the book up there, you may not need it for a week or a month or even a year, but you know that it's still on the bookshelf when you need to go get it. When you need to retrieve it, you can go to the shelf, you can pull the book off, and you can get the information that you want. Likewise, when we save something to a hard drive, using that as storage, we can go to the hard drive at any time, today or next year, pull off the information that we want as well. Now that, of course, is different than RAM memory. Remember that the hard drive is storage, but RAM memory is not. This is temporary, sometimes called volatile or short-term. It's not for long-term storage. If you want to keep something a long time, you had better not keep it in RAM memory, because as soon as the computer goes off, that information will be lost. This is short-term. RAM can hold file-specific data, like if I'm typing a letter, until I actually save it, that will be held in RAM memory. But it also can contain computer instructions. So likewise, when the computer is trying to figure out what it needs to do, those will temporarily be held in RAM memory. When the computer is turned off, RAM is cleared or reset, so it is not a storage place. RAM is measured these days in gigabytes as well. And the higher number or the more RAM you have, the better your system performs and the more that it can hold at any given time. Think about it this way. Having more RAM is like having somebody who has a better short-term memory. I joke with my husband that I have a three-item limit in my short-term memory. If he tells me to get bread, eggs, and cheese, and then he adds butter, I lose the last one because I can only remember three things at a time. He's better at such things, so maybe he can remember ten things at a time. That, in some ways, makes him a little bit more efficient, because he can remember a few more instructions or directions at any given time without having to go back and look it up. RAM memory is exactly the same. But how does this actually affect you and the way you work on your computer? More RAM means several things. It means faster performance, that you can have more open files at one time, that you can work with larger, more complex files, that you can have more programs running at one time. And like having a table to study from instead of a desk or holding a book on your lap, the more RAM you have, the better. Well, let's talk about this for just a second. 
you get faster performance because instead of having to feed the computer one instruction at a time, the RAM can hold multiple instructions so the computer can simply access it faster. Likewise, that's why you can have more than one file open at a time and they can be very complex files because that can be held in temporary memory. Let's go to my analogy though. Let's say that you need to go and you need to study. But you get to the library and the library is filled up. Now remember, the library has shelves and shelves of books. That's your hard drive. If you can't find anything but an individual chair, then you're kind of limited on how much you can learn at one time. Because you can look at one book that you've gotten off the shelf, but when you're done with that book, you have to go put it back before you can get a second book because you can only hold one at a time. On the other hand, if the library is empty and you have a really large table, you might be able to pull 8 or 10 or 20 books off the shelf at one time and have all of those books open in front of you. Now you can work a little bit faster and more efficiently because all of that information is right at your fingertips. You don't have to go back to the bookshelf each time you need to get a new piece of information. That's what happens when you have more RAM on a computer system and why all of these things are true when you have